Hello everyone, it's Doug McGuff with Ultimate Exercise, Body by Science and DrMcGuff.com. In today's video, I want to discuss with you a really great scientific article that came out on July 4th, 1996 in the New England Journal of Medicine. Reason I want to go over this is to give you a real sense of accomplishment for what you may be doing in your training and the degree of physical improvements that you've achieved along the way. This helps to put it in proper context. It also puts in proper context, a lot of times we judge the book by its cover. We are much more inclined to take advice from influencers on the internet if they look really, really muscular. A lot of the influencers on the internet openly admit to taking performance enhancing drugs, yet provide advice for people that are not taking performance enhancing drugs. And I would like to show you um, what the contribution of that might actually be. So I'm going to walk up and show this paper to you because it is available in full print form on the internet if you go look it up. You can actually read the whole thing because this is a really well done study. So what they did in this study is they took normal male subjects that had experience in weight training. They had to be 90 to 115 percent of their ideal body weight and then they broke them into separate groups. And the groups were trying to look at the um, influence of supraphysiologic doses of testosterone on the outcomes and the results from their training. The intent for this, in prior to 1996, uh, supraphysiologic doses of testosterone had yet to be tested in any normal subjects. It was only done in castrated animals or hypogonadal males. So nothing had really been done to see to what extent performance enhancing drugs or super physiologic doses of testosterone would have. So this was really well done. They broke them into four groups. So you got either nothing, placebo, plus no training. You got testosterone with no training. You got placebo plus training or testosterone plus training. The thing that was constant across all the subjects is everyone got an injection and the injections looked exactly the same and everyone got an injection even if you were receiving placebo and no training. And the other thing is because the injections look exactly the same, the experimenters didn't know who was in what group. So there was very good randomization. There was standardization on their diet. There was standardization on the training stimulus that was applied over the course of the study. They used underwater hydrostatic weighing for lean body mass changes, and they used cross-sectional MRI for changes in actual muscle mass. So here's where things get interesting. So when you actually go to the results in terms of lean body mass, naturally the people that got a placebo injection and did not exercise basically showed no change in their lean body mass whatsoever. So the group that got an injection of testosterone but did not weight train or did not exercise, those people got an increase of 3.2 kilograms of lean body mass. Then the group that got the placebo injection but did resistance exercise, that group got 1.9 kilograms of increase in lean body mass compared to 3.2 kilograms in the group that just got the testosterone injection. Stated differently, testosterone in a super physiologic dose of 600 milligrams produced 43% greater gains in lean body mass than training by itself. And then when you looked at the group that got testosterone plus the exercise, those people gained 6.1 kilograms of lean mass, literally triple what someone would get if they trained without the chemical assistance. So when you're looking at someone on the internet and looking at their physique and deciding whether you should follow their advice or not, especially if they openly admit to using performance enhancing drugs, you need to consider that two thirds of what you're seeing there came from the substance and not from the exercise program. Another way to state this is if you really want intelligent training advice and you want to judge the book by its cover, I would suggest seeking out someone that has had 
generally good results, even if they're modest, training in an unenhanced way, because that is a person that has really filtered out what is necessary to produce results in someone that is not enhanced. Make no mistake, this video that I'm putting out is not to suggest that you should be taking performance enhancing drugs. That's a personal decision that each and every person has to make. But when it comes to deciding who best knows how to manipulate the training stimulus to get results, I wouldn't necessarily look to the one that's taking performance enhancing drugs because it literally triples their results in this modest amount of performance enhancing material and that will clearly muddy the water on their assessment of what works and what doesn't. So just something to think about for ultimate exercise, Body by Science, DrMcGuff.com. You guys go out in the real world and do some dope shit.